good afternoon or possibly good morning or good evening wherever you may be you are listening to convergence episode 24 normally you hear my very very close friend karen holton's voice but my name is Laura Lee Potvin. I've been a guest many times on Karen's show, and she is away enjoying uh, some much needed holiday time for the next two weeks. So you're going to be seeing me. Before I get started, I'm going to let you know a little bit about myself before I introduce our guest, as well as I want to remind everybody to please check out peopleforpeople.ni ng or ning.com um this is a fantastic network broadcasting out of scotland and it's one of the last free speech places where we can speak freely and broadcast without being censored with that being said please check out the donate page on the website and if you like what you're hearing there are some fantastic uh, podcasts on this network <coughs> excuse me and it costs money to do this. Um, it costs money for servers. And again, if you are able to help support what you love to hear or see, uh, some people were on video today as well, so you can watch the show, um, please consider making a donation. It really helps out. And especially, like I said, it's one of the last places where we can freely speak without being censored. With that being said, I do want to thank Yaz, who is the owner and producer for the show. He makes our job easy. We don't have to push any buttons. We just get to, to chat here. I also want to thank Vanessa, who is the moderator for the show. If you do have any questions, questions, please pass them along on the main page you know, on peopleforpeople.ning.com. You do have to register, it's free, but then you can join in the chat and Vanessa will send the questions along to us. My name is Laura Lee Potvin. I am a Canadian psychic medium. I'm also a crystal Reiki energy healer, medical intuitive, Akashic Records practitioner, a spiritual teacher and mentor, and I'm also a registered nurse. And today I have a very close friend of mine who I work on a lot of things behind the scenes. She is from Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia. She is a fellow light worker. She is also an Akashic Records practitioner. I call her a crystal expert because I believe she is. She makes the most incredible grids that I'm so grateful. She shares them in my group on Facebook as well as many other social places we will get to at the end of the show. And she's also got a master's in epidemiology. Her name is Leanne Clark. Welcome, Leanne. How are you? Hello. I'm very Hi. well. Is it hot there? Because I, I had the window open and it's like humidity central. I had to close it with the traffic. Yeah, it's humid here, but actually we're having a nice, I would say mild summer. So it's not too bad. Yeah, we we uh, started early here for Canada. A lot of people think I live up where the igloos are. No, I don't. I live smack mat dab right in the middle of Canada. I'm about 35 minutes away from the Minnesota border and about six hours north from Minneapolis, Minnesota, where actually, if anybody was a fan of Prince, shows my age, that's where he used to live. So today, uh, sticking with the theme that Karen Holton covers with her show with a bit of politics uh, she discusses freely what's going on in Canada so you've got two countries represented here but we're having you know what Leanne and I were having a conversation as we usually do daily and she shared with me we were talking about self-forgiveness and how to forgive ourselves because we can be the hardest on ourselves rather than most people we have in our life. There are some strangers and maybe some friends behind our backs who may not be as kind. But that's the hardest thing is to forgive ourselves. And believe it or not, we're going to kind of weave it in with what's going on in the world and how this may be able to help you, maybe give you a little bit of peace and possibly maybe even be able to give you um, a little bit of hope and to be able to move forward. So, Leanne, I'm wondering, would you mind sharing that really profound message and then we're going to kind of break it down for people? Yeah, I will. Um, we were talking yesterday and to, just to give a little background, um, and I won't be long-winded, but we were talking about something and I said, I wish I hadn't been that way in the past. And um, Laura Lee's response to me was, forgive yourself. and 
I, I did. I was like, well, I have, I have, but it was very profound. And so that was my response to her was, I, I am forgiven. I get, I forgive myself now. I'm not the same person I was then. And, and then she was responding to me. And then this profound thought came. And what it was, was that in the past, I was that person. Now I forgive myself. And in the future, it is healed. So then your future self will go back to the past and will heal that. So what I say when I describe that is, so that's a very linear way of thinking about that past, now, and future, but it all moves like a snap of the fingers. And so really, before you even ask for forgiveness, it is done. And that's the profound part that don't, don't sweat it. Don't keep the load. Don't keep the worry. Just it's fine. Okay. That happened. Forgive yourself. You know, you mean it. It's healed. So now just let it go. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, yeah, see, that's it. I really do forgive myself. But maybe a year ago or two years ago, maybe not so much, but I really felt, oh, yes, I have forgiven myself. Mm -hmm. And that message was um, given to me in the last like couple of years of, of deep meditation. And, and it came up again in conversation yesterday with, with Laura Lee. And so it was just, it was beautiful. So now and- if you, Oh, sorry, go ahead, Leanne. You're going to finish that thought. Sorry. And, and so th- that, that, that way of thinking of, of, give, you know, forgiving yourself, giving yourself grace, giving yourself love and compassion, like you probably would be more easily to give someone else than maybe yourselves in a lot of instances, which I think sometimes we have a, a tendency to do. It's just know it's okay. It's, a, it's okay. Just release it and it's fine. That's given me so much peace over the years of just, all right, well, then life goes on and we continue. And you could you could relate that if you had a very big decision to make, if you had a big choice you had to make coming up. It's you're going to make the best decision you can, given the information that you have at hand. So I would say this is how you could relate it to maybe a situation today. One of which all of us are involved in currently. Yes, which we're all involved in currently. <laughs> that it would be just you make the decision, any decision you need to make, just make it. It's okay. No, it's okay. You're going to make a decision based on your experience and the information you have at hand, mm-hmm. as we all do. But going a little deeper, maybe that would make you feel better knowing it's okay. It's completely okay. <laughs> And I was going to, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I always have a delay, even though I have increased my internet speed. And remember, we're dealing with three different countries here. Talk about the magic of the internet. We're broadcasting from Scotland. And Leanne is in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm in Thunder Bay, Northwestern Ontario, Canada. Thank God for this. Now, the reason why I found this so profound, and at first when you hear this, you're probably thinking my future self will go back and forgive my past self and what have you. But, you know, when you think about it, Leanne, this is one of the things we do talk about when she's been on my show as well, is even with time. So, for example, I say the word now. That's already in the past. I can't get that back. All I can do is move forward. And we can't really, even if you're a psychic or a medium, human beings are not 100% infallible. Uh, We make mistakes as well, too. But the thing is, we can't really even control the future. And a lot of people like to be able to control what's going on because it gives them, I've really understood it with having a, an adult son with severe autism. It gives a sense of security, knowing what's coming next, knowing what the schedule is, what the routine is, what to expect. But unfortunately, life's not like that. So what happens and how we were relating this, because again, when we work behind the scenes a lot together, we're sharing information, we're sharing what's going on in the world. But what we're finding about, and I've talked many times with Karen Holton about this on her own program, is I think collectively around the world, and I think what's going on right now with with the coronavirus, it was designed to be this way, is to create this fear around the world. Now, there's many things that happen with fear. I mean, never mind about that. No, I don't know many people that like it unless you say you're a horror fan, horror movie fan, and you don't mind a a quick scare. But there's actually a physiological 
issue that happens when you go into a state of fear. You end up with a fight or flight. Um, I know you know this, Leanne, but for, for our listeners, you go into the fight or flight um, physiology. And what that really means is, and it relates back to the caveman days, basically, right? so they say, you know, you you say you step out of your cave and there's a T-Rex there. You've got a choice. Either you freeze or you run and the blood has to go to your brain has not even your brain it drains from your brain and just goes to all your physical organs and enabling you either to run or like i say just stay in there so why we related this is never mind with the amount of fear we have never seen so many low vibrational energies collectively around the world long-term um friends are fighting over really petty details, Um, family, families are breaking up, couples are breaking up. I've never seen so much in the way of argument, fighting, disagreement, and so on. Never mind even the way the situation is designed. Six feet apart, you can't be around other people to discuss what's going on. We're all being faced with the jab, and I call it that, because even coming from a medical background, and you know this as well, Ian, being an epidemiologist, I'm going to give you a second to explain to people if they're not sure what that means. Um, you know, it's not a vaccine the way it's it's designed. If you go and actually do your research, because some of the topics we're going to cover today about vaccines, this has never been used on humanity before. And in the animal studies, because this is not new, they have been trying to get this into the public for well over 20 years since the last SARS epidemic. So there's a lot to unpack here, and that's why we started with this message. Because forgiveness begins with yourself, and we're going to talk about places where to get information and why and how. But regardless of what decision you make, it will be the best decision for you in that moment. And you have to accept what the decision is regardless. Even say looking at in the future, you realize, oh God, what did I do? Or, and I'm not just talking about the jab, I'm talking about anything. And that's basically where we're at. I know I can hear literally, Leanne's got a ton to say about this. Go ahead, Leanne. Well, I was pretty much gonna say what what you were gonna say, which is I first was going to specifically give a remark based on the jab (laughs) and then just, you know, basically say just broadly, no matter what you're dealing with, it's, it's, you're going to make the decision you need to make with the information you have. And, and given a lot of what's going on in the world right now, and uh, a lot of information coming out from the past, um, you need to realize we've been lied to for a very long time. So you need to also remember that. So don't be hard on yourself, even more so. So, um, or I've heard so many people say, oh, my God, I'm so angry. I am, like, shocked. I'm horrified. I'm so sad, whatever it may be. But I have just realized with being red-pilled or waking up that my whole world, everything I was taught, everything I knew has been a lie, right? Yeah, and and that is exactly what I that's happened to me in the last year and I mean I thought I had some of this figured out and I guess I was literally still starting my spiritual journey since it's a journey not a destination yeah and 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 I don't know spending more time in meditation and being spiritual but also living life and doing what we have to do in our normal time here on earth right and it really did not become apparent to me until December of 2020 and so last year this time we would be having a very different conversation and we did and i knew i could see because i've been doing this for a long (laughs) time and behind the scenes and i've seen your evolution but i think the beauty of it is we could have a a conversation and agree to disagree and that was okay we heard each other and i could see you were evolving (laughs) oh yeah I actually was thinking back to that uh, this week, and I thought, wow. I, I mean, like, you you gave me the grace to do, okay, well, that's where she's at. And, yeah. I mean, that, that is what you have to do, is you have to give people grace and space and, and yourself as well. And um, 
Um, yeah. Um, in December, I, I mean, I remember where I was when I made the statement. Oh my God, my whole life is. I remember <laughs> too. You want to share when it was? It was a particular, well, I guess, documentary you found. It was a certain three hour documentary that I was watching. And I was like, oh, oh my, you know, and it was just like, oh my God. And I thought, and then there's millions of other people that are going to have to go through this whole realization. Yeah. Oh, and, and um, so having come, okay, having come from a medical background, a public health background, specifically a degree in epidemiology, uh, specializing in infectious diseases. Yeah, reporting diseases to the state of Georgia, reporting diseases to the CDC. Yep. Um, I thought I was kind of in a wait and see, like, okay, what's going on here? But my first question that kind of raised my antenna was, are we flattening the curve? Or are we prolonging this by making people wear masks? Mm -hmm. Hmm. And that was the first, I don't know about this. And then I thought, well, okay, well, until I know, I will continue to wear a mask until I can figure this out for myself. But then it was just more and more nonsense to me. I mean, that's kind of how it, it all accumulated. Now I would call it nonsense. This time last year, I wanted to be a vaccine volunteer. And I don't know how I didn't follow through. I guess the grace of God, I did not follow I through. I think what it was, Leanne, and I would hear you saying this and about the masks, and I never pushed it on you. I knew, though, you were open to receiving. So I would share different videos or you'd start doing. I still remember when you found out one of our, both of our favorite sources, and I recommend you to check them out, too, as well, is X22. Now, again, you may not agree with everything he's saying. Uh, he's a huge Q supporter. Q has been very much villainized in the mainstream media. Um, but it's not one person. And, yeah. But it's the way he looks at things. He gives so much hope. He gives so much positivity for the future. Doesn't come from a light worker background. He's not going to be feeding you a bunch of BS, but he's able to clarify the big picture about what's going on, what he believes will be coming from the future. And the reason why is because Q is actually, in, it was started, I believe, 63 years ago with the assassination of J uh, John F. Kennedy. And they've been waiting this long, and it's over 200 military uh, generals, there's militaries higher, they've never identified themselves. But they used a quantum computer, and when you first read these posts, it, you thought they related to the date. They're, they were talking about the future, and go, it's crazy the way it's structured, if you ever get a chance to watch, right, Leanne? Oh, yeah. Um, um, I actually had a light worker friend. Mm -hmm whom also has a medical background and has her own very, very, very um, successful practice at what she does. She mm -hmm. just happened nonchalantly in conversation one day mm -hmm. in 2017, says, hey, do you know about the Q post? And she just like, she's talking yeah. to me like I know what all of this is. And she's like names and throwing all, all out, all of these po um, politicians' names and other people. And I'm like, no, no. And so she's trying to tell me what it's about. And I'm like, well, and so, you know, I'm like, okay, well, thanks. But she said it to me two or three times over a while. And then I finally just started to look into it. And it's like, wow, wow, like, wow. And it, and just somewhere it kind of, it kind of fit in my mind. It kind of fit. And um, it really seems like it's playing out the way that, Mm -hmm. All of the cucumbers are now. As for specifically X twenty two, yeah, I do like him. He he doesn't give you hopium, and he does not. He's not spiritual. He does not put a religious context on it, really. Mm -hmm. And he does not. Um, he doesn't really give you a lot of personal commentary. He does give you his beliefs on it, but as it relates to Q post and political views that are already out there in the media, that's mm -hmm. what he does. So it really feels like he's just kind of uh, giving you that and commenting on that. But it it really seems to always be what is happening. 
truthfully happening. Connect the dots. And it's not just yeah. one person yeah. because we've talked about yeah. this. So I think the reason why it really resonated, and I thought, what do you think of this, Leanne? Should we talk about this? Is because I believe, and I have a saying again, I'm going to refer to my son with autism. There were times when he was little, he would be in a rage for three, four hours. All I could do was hold him, make sure you're not going to hurt anybody. You're not going to hurt yourself. And I think it must have come from spirit. I didn't have my, I wasn't aware. I shouldn't say I didn't have. I wasn't aware of the abilities that I had now. And I say this often on my own show as well as um, lots of times when I'm a guest. But what it is, is if it makes no difference 10 years from now, let alone uh, 10 minutes from now, uh, let it go and pick your battles. And so where I go with that is... There's a lot of people arguing about a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people arguing about political parties and who should be in this. This is a little bit about politics, but it's so much bigger and goes so much further than what you're seeing right before the your face, if you will, on mainstream media, TV. And think about it. Ten years from now, uh, there'll be somebody completely different in in power, hopefully, unless you're in a communist country um, where Canada seems like it's sort of heading, um, you'll have a, hopefully a different political leader. It'll be hopefully long past this period that we're in, whatever it may be. And are you really ever going to remember that you stopped talking, say, to your loved ones or you stopped talking to a lot of really close friends? You've been friends. Are you even going to remember why you had this argument? versus putting aside your differences uniting together as one as the human race because i'm not trying to be melodramatic here i think the fate of humanity is at a precipice right now what do you think leanne oh yeah i do too um the, the what i was thinking when you're when you're talking just there was the kinds of conversations that we are having Mm -hmm. to have with our loved ones and ourselves is just abominable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but alas, it is here. And we have some very um, profound change coming. I do think it is for the, the uh, best of humanity that we all come together to really stand together in solidarity and not to be about one group, one attribute, one one this or that but it is about we're, we're more alike than we are different don't don't talk about don't don't think about the differences this isn't about differences this really is about humans loving each other and sticking together and um taking back our countries <laughs> mm -hmm. taking back our lives it is mm -hmm. it really is these these laws are still intact even though it's an emergency situation your laws are not suspended so you need to get out there and be the change that you want to see in the world. And I, it can be something small. Yeah. It doesn't have to be go out there and start a protest group, but Hey, maybe it is that if that's what you want to do, but mm -hmm. it is to um, be the change you want to see. No, I agree with it because I think with human nature, what we tend to do is sit back and wait like, who, who's going to do something about this? When is something going to be done about yeah. that? But unfortunately, we've never identified who the someone is or something. So if you see that there's a need that needs to be filled, and yes, we're not promoting violence in any way or anything like that. Okay. I mean, even I think the biggest gift you can give yourself is to unplug from TV unplug from radio, uh, even just for a day or two. And I'm not talking about programming like this. I'm talking about mainstream media because I was listening to a really good friend of mine, Jimothy Masters. He's been on Karen's program before. I'm almost positive he's been a guest on here. And uh, he challenged people. He's in Australia. And he said, I challenge you to unplug from mainstream media, newspapers and radio for three days. And then I ask you to go out and I ask you to look for COVID. Where are you going to find it? Think about it. You weren't being fed all this fear propaganda and everything else. 
how much would you really know was going on and and everything that's being shown apparently there is a program um an advertisement it's a commercial in australia where they have a woman in her young 30s laying in a hospital bed in subdued lighting with a massive oxygen mask on these eyes wide with fear gasping for every breath that's to create fear now we're not saying that there weren't people that passed away from what was going on here yes but there is a 99.99% survival rate. If you are, you, you, lots of people that are elderly that have no comorbidities or other illnesses to survive this or are drugs to treat this, um, that you can survive this. So now the other thing I really want to talk about, and I hope people can hear this, where in the history of humanity have you seen where they're giving away million dollar lotteries to force you to get some kind of medical treatment there they are handing out um scholarships to college fully paid um children free ice cream free food free whatever it is to get you to do this now this is fully treatable what the unfortunate part in canada I was saying 80%, I believe it's almost 90% now. They have no idea. They're always, well, you know, if you had list, just sat back and listened to what the government told you, this would have been over a long time ago. They can't even fathom that what we're being told are lies. And so there's so many people that are waking up and speaking out like we do. And all we ask of you is just take a look at other resources and then you listed a bunch before we started so feel free to jump in at any time and share what kind of resources or other thoughts well i would just say no matter what side you stand on any of these um mm -hmm. um the jab or the illness whichever side that you stand on those or if you're questioning it all i would say is just look for a different source that you regularly would not read from and and just see what kind of conversations are going on and especially if the title looks like it's something that you may not be interested in or you don't agree with just read it and see what that conversation is just to know what's being said and that can be an initial that can be um something that starts change if you start kind of looking in different directions for things and um I mean, I don't, I don't look at mainstream media media anymore. Um, I still am on YouTube, but I don't, I just don't look for that stuff. And um, I just have certain people that I that I watch now, and it is mainly just to see for <laughs> intel drops, <laughs> uh, pretty much, and then just um, you know the political things going on in the U.S. But I look for something, I guess, now that's considered independent at this point. You can't consider it mainstream, and. Yeah. Um, you know, something that reports just the facts. Maybe if you can find something like that. Um, can I jump in here just for a sec? Because yeah. you said something very profound to me yeah. yesterday yeah. about a fellow friend of ours who has a family member um, that has been buying sort of, and, and she's within that age group that is very understandable because back when she was uh, younger, even this person's um, parent, we'll say, um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the slogan was news you can trust. There was all kinds of things, right? So yeah. to even consider that, well, this would have been in the news. Like if it's not in the news, it can't be true. Yeah. Unfortunately, that has changed. But you said something very imperative. You said that if you're not sure about something or it seems crazy or you've heard it's a conspiracy theory, you really don't like that word. I prefer truth seeking. Yeah. yeah. If that, whatever you were reading, watching, no matter what it is, and it can't answer the question, why? Why are they doing this? Yes. Why is this happening the way it is? And it doesn't all connect, and the dots don't all connect. That is a huge red flag, don't you agree? That's what you yeah. said, and it really hit me, the word, if yeah. it can't answer why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can't answer the question why, why are we having to do all of these things and these restrictions? Why did you tell us we still have to wear the masks? Or um, 
well, you might be able to come off restrictions because of this or that, then uh, all of this is just, if you can't ask, answer the reason why, I mean, it's, there's something there. There's something there you need to really research further and mm-hmm. keep asking yourself why. Search mm-hmm. for the truth. Do some research. Do your research yourself. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe it, do the research. Search yourself. Mm-hmm. If you don't, if you don't know, do the research. Try to find it. Maybe mm-hmm. ask other people where they go for their news just to ask because mm-hmm. sometimes somebody will give you something that's really valuable to you. Mm-hmm. Um I'm trying my best not to sway anyone one way or another where I get my exactly. news. But just, exactly. But just, I agree. Just, it is just, d- just do the research for yourself and go look, go look for something. And I know this is very broad, but it's just no matter what it is, an illness or buying a car or, or you know, whatever you're going to do, go do your research and look for it yourself and just see what you come up with. And you're satisfied with the answers you get or, or you're not satisfied at all with what you're finding. That's very telling. That's true. But the other thing I'm going to suggest, if you can avoid using Google, I'm sorry, but they're connected in with all this. So there's DuckDuckGo. There's many other search engines you can use that you can find whatever you need. I still use Google for a lot of things like images, whatever it may be. If you're going to buy a car, yes, that is the best source. So that's one way there's books out there, but people are probably going to say, well, okay, so I've got some questions to ask. And if you can be very objective about the way you word the question, because if you slant it towards what your belief system is and you say you use Google, yeah, you're going to find everything to do to support that. So try and be objective when you word it. But I'm, I could almost hear people saying, well, okay, I'm new to this. I have no idea where to go for information or what to do. Exactly mm-hmm. like Leanne said, talk to other people that you know, that may know in the know using social media. But the other places that are really good place to start, um, Telegram is a great place. That is another place that is uncensored. Looking for independent podcasters such as myself, such as People for People. Um, And again, I'm going to remind you if you're joining late, it's peopleforpeople.ning.com. Com, you're listening to Convergence, which usually episode 24, which usually has Karen Holton, and I'm her guest host and friend joining in for the next two weeks while she's on holidays. But I want to remind you, please, to check out for that donate button on People for People. It costs money to have servers, it costs money to have the electricity. There's all kinds of things involved with this. And you know what? If you're enjoying what you're hearing, because People for People is one of the last places where you can speak uncensored please consider supporting it to keep this coming to you. I also forgot to mention, excuse me very quickly, I am a podcaster as well. I have my own show, The Angel Rock. Um, It's on Monday nights. It's on United Public Radio Network. We aren't censored as well on that network, but because we're on YouTube, we do have to be careful what we say. So that's why I say that People for People is one of the last places where you are uncensored. And I believe that you had a great group of people. You got a chat room here. Um, you got Gaz again, who I want to thank, or Gary. He's a um, wonderful musician. Gaz, you're going to have to remind me if you type in the chat or Vanessa, what time? It's Wednesday evenings, but because this is out of Scotland, um, I think it's about four o'clock in the morning Eastern for me. I just want to make sure I get the proper time to tune in because he's got a great voice and uh, you know sometimes we all need music music is very uplifting and uh, energizing and you know because I'm, I'm really meeting and I'd love to hear your thoughts too Leanne there's a lot of people out there that are feeling so defeated so defeated hopeless um, they're being faced with either get the job by September or lose your job um, are you meeting a lot of people as well I actually am not. Mm -hmm. I am not. I mean, I'm hearing that like other, you know, watching podcasts and people talking about that. And I hear it being reported. But no, personally, I have not encountered anyone who is having that conversation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could tell you in a vacuum what I would do. But I know that that's not realistic for people who need to feed their family and have money coming in and have a job. So I I don't know. I don't know what to say about that, but 
Vanessa added, just as a PS yes. toy, I respond to that, that Gaz is live here on peoplefourpeople.ning.com on Wednesdays, 9 p.m. UK time, 1 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. Now, I had thought, actually, you are right, Vanessa. Yeah, because you guys are five hours ahead of me, so I apologize. So it's in the middle of the afternoon, so you can still listen if you're over on the other side of the pond like we are. And uh, Gaz is a professional singer. Yes, he has his incredible, he has an incredible voice and very talented. And plus you get to hang out with some like-minded people and be entertained. So please check that out. Um, no, I, I'm finding, I'm hearing this collectively, and I even admit it, uh, I was talking to another friend just before we went live, and she had admitted she's feeling that way, even my own partner, who does a lot of research for his show, it sounds like a cooking show, he's on United Public Radio Network with me, he's on Tuesday evenings, his show is called The Delicious Recipe. And there's a reason why I'm sharing all this. It's not a cooking show. His name is Dell. And uh, when he lived in Toronto, one of his close female friends used to call him delicious. And he's done many different jobs, but he also has his chef's papers. And when he was coming up with a name for his show, which I prefer is truth seeking versus conspiracy theory, he says we throw all the ingredients in the pot he even picks a name like he'll call it i joined him last week i think he called it some kind of picnic it always is with food but he <laughs> says we throw the ingredients in the pot we stir them all up and we at the end of the show we leave it up to you the listener or viewer because we also are on video and uh, you get to decide and i think that that's kind of what we're trying to do here is not get too specific because we could because things are pretty scary here in Canada right now with the way things are going. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling quite down even myself and I and my partner as well. But I'm realizing over the weekend, and I just said this on Sunday, I don't know if this is disclosure day or what, but it has not stopped hearing from people all over the world. People are waking up more and more. People are starting to unite make changes behind the scenes and hopefully be able to say, don't you dare, as Dr. Rima would say, um, who is on this evening with um, the Unmasked Crusader, Crusaders with uh, Ralph Fusatola. Um, so I'm glad you're not running into people like that. But the reason why we mention that is, and I'm sure you've heard it, uh, you need to raise your vibration. How do you raise your vibration, though, when you've been threatened with your, you're going to lose your job, never mind small businesses and what have you. And I'm going to draw your attention to Candace Owen, who actually I watched a live of hers on Facebook last Friday. And she really broke it all down about does your government, regardless of where you live, have the right to be telling you what to do with your medical health? And then she used the example that she has severe asthma. And she said, I don't get a message from the government every time I need to use my asthma medication saying, um, uh, Candace, you know, we're going to put your name in a million dollar draw every time you use your asthma medication. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And her whole point was, she said, I'm an adult. I am educated. I have done my research. I don't need anybody to convince me when I need my medicine. When I need it, I need it. I can't breathe. So this is where she was going with this. And she gave quite a bit of good advice with the fact that, and again, she's coming from the U.S., so it depends where you live in the world. But it was about documenting everything, asking many why questions, including um, if I'm going, if you're going to force me as an employer to get the jab, are you going to be covering me if there's any repercussions and so on and so forth? What's your thoughts on that, Leanne? What have you seen from your perspective? Okay, I, I will add, I'll add this. Anytime you're in any medical office, mm -hmm. period, but especially during this time, the they're supposed to um, give consent, okay? Informed, whether, informed, consent. informed <laughs> consent. So whether this is a written consent, a document saying, I've offered you this 
vitamin shot. I've offered you this treatment. You know, I mean, it could be a shot of, of antibiotics, whatever. So that you have to sign something saying that they have told you what they're giving you. OK, so that's written consent or they verbally have to tell you I'm giving you a vitamin shot and it's going to be this and it's for this. And here's the side effects. They are so sloppy at doing that. And I'm, I really mean this. I don't like that. As a patient, I sit here and I read very, very I do a read and they're like, it, it's just the standard form, sign it. And I just say, this is written consent. I'm, I'm going to take the time to read this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, no, I'm not trying to pick a fight with you, but it's like, no, really please take the time to read or listen to them before anything is given to you, but just get into that habit. Get into All that habit. No matter what it, it is, it is. there's a reason why there is the saying, it was hidden in the fine print. You should yes. always sign it. Yeah. You should always read everything. Don't feel pressured if somebody's tapping their foot, like, oh, come on, it's just, it's the same thing everybody else writes. All you have to do is put your name on it. No, I'm yeah. going to take the time to read it. And then I will consider where I'm going to sign it as or not. I do the same thing. But the reason why is, and again, this is this is where we get labeled with conspiracy theory, which also came out around the JFK assassinations this term. Yeah. Um, and what they're finding now, you can go back almost the beginning of this, all this stuff that was labeled conspiracy theory, lo and behold, the so-called conspiracy theories, many of the things they've been saying have come out to be true. The other thing is, why are you not seeing and hearing about people with like say reactions or what's happening there's so many things that you're not being shown uh, or the other thing i want to maybe give you another way to measure things if there is you know people that were say on youtube we're on facebook we're on twitter wherever they were and a lot of us fall a lot of different people on there and all of a sudden they've disappeared do you really believe all of a sudden that many people are getting pulled off of these platforms when some of them have been there for years and they were putting out some stuff that even if it sounded strange to you why do you think they were being pulled off they were allowed to why to talk about go. this yep yeah. why again being able to talk about anything before i mm -hmm. believe they're being censored and i'm going to give you another little analogy depending on where you live i know over here in america there's the National Enquirer. It's always been there. I know um, it might be the sun over in the UK. Um, and please forgive me if I, I'm not bashing anybody or anything like that. But it's we all know them depending on um, what publication. And, you know, you kind of get that. Well, yeah, this is kind of crazy news. And there are a lot of it's been proven not to be true or not. And I'm not saying that about the sun. Um, but I know with the National Enquirer, we've all known that, right? So it's right there front and center when you're checking out with your trolley or your cart and you're at the grocery store, been there for years. I remember being a little kid in the and the cart and with all the chocolate bars, it was always there. So if that is supposedly fake news, why has that never been pulled off the shelves? Everybody kind of knows it. I, and I can say that from my own experience with the National Enquirer. So why is that not being pulled off? Why is that not being censored? Again, these are all why questions, right? Yeah, I mean, that's a good point because actually there are some people who have pointed out that some of the headlines in those types of publications actually give really good information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know exactly what you mean. The National Enquirer was always thought to be a rag. I'm going to call it that when. Yeah, that's a good well, term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but it does. It does make you think, and even today, it's like, yeah, I don't think I think some of the things I have on there have actually been true, but but that's not how uh, we were taught to perceive that mm -hmm. publication. But it is interesting. Why are they still out there? But certain people can't say certain things. If if it's not important, then why are you taking them down? Why are they being um, covered and deleted and shut up and doxed and whatever destroyed? then it would just be you're talking about some stupid thing. So you must be getting really hot. You must be getting really close if you've got to silence um, that topic, that conversation. 
I keep so, thinking of Men in Black when they made that joke in there. I think it was the first movie about, well, of course, all the alien news is in the National Enquirer. That's where it is. But that was a good point, Leanne, because of what some places, and you've got to have a discerning eye. I think you've always got to ask why, if it doesn't make sense. I call it the proverbial back shelf or even something yeah. really way out there. I kind of stick it up there and it sits. And I know with time. The truth is eventually going to reveal itself or, yes, I will debunk that. But, you know, some some places actually are putting a few kernels of truth with quite a bit of misinformation. And I'm not saying going to everything with being suspicious, but always ask why. And I will tell you, I, I seen my partner watching some of the sources that we would call mainstream media. And I remember asking him, this is about a year ago, why are you watching this? And he said, and I've never forgotten, we need to know what everybody is saying, what everything has been out there, educating ourselves, being aware of both sides, if you will. I hate the fact that there's any sides. But he said, and then using a discerning um, mind to be able to figure out what is the truth. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Then you know. You know yeah. exactly what's out there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And... I will say one thing to maybe those people who might say, I'm just so tired. I am so tired of trying to look at the stuff, read it, keep up with it, or figure out, is it this or is it this? Mm -hmm. Then I would just say to you, the devil is in the details for sure. It is exhausting. Mm -hmm. um, then I would say, maybe don't concern yourself with the details. If you need to do this for your own peace of mind, I mean, don't mm -hmm. put your head in the sand necessarily, but, but just there's, Two things I think that are very valuable here. One, I would say, then again, be the change you want to be. But also think about what it is you want to see and focus on that because that really does bring it to you. The other thing is, I'm just going to put my 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 opinion on this. I do believe the light's already won. So I would say, don't worry about the details. And I can't tell you how much comfort that has given me over the last several months, but certainly the last two, I'm almost to the stage of rejoicing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not kidding. It's like, actually, Laura Lee, before we came on, mm -hmm. I just got a confirmation of something. So it's like, yeah, it's, um, it's all going to work out. It might get a little ugly. It might be a little rough, but it is going to work out. Mm -hmm. It is going to be, everything's going to be okay, but keep doing what you're doing. Make the best decisions you can. If you pray, pray, pray for all of us, pray for yourself. Pray for others. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I would love, say. I, I love that. And what I always add is that our words, our thoughts, and our emotions are so powerful. Mm -hmm. I do practice what I preach. So what? If, picture what you want to see instead of spending your energy and, and worry on what you don't want to see. They're proving it with quantum physics, how powerful this actually is. Energy can neither be destroyed nor created. It can be transferred from one place to another. One person can be the change that changes depending on how powerful you are with that energy of yours. Some people don't even realize how powerful they are energetically, but your words and your thoughts. And I do believe, yes, there may be some difficulty that we may still have to go through. But I truly do believe as well that the light always conquers the dark, that the truth always reveals itself over lies. It may take time. There may be a lot of crap to wade through. But that's why we're saying pull together. Knowledge is empowering. We have much, many more people on this planet that can pull together. And as people are waking up, if you are in the know, Please give them that grace and hold that space for them. Be a resource for them rather because it's so easy and we all just want to say, I've been trying to tell you this for how many years? That doesn't solve any problem because as Leanne shared, when she finally, like she was already kind of in the know, but when she had the whole awakening, she was like, oh my God, everything I've known, everything I thought about has been a lie, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I don't want to read or watch anything because I'm like, why? <laughs> why? why? Because, but then I think, no, no, come on, don't be that dramatic. 
calm down. But, but it's okay. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we will. Sometimes we're going to be sad. Sometimes we're going to be whatever we've been talking about. But it's getting back to that place yeah. of when I say higher yeah. vibration, spending time in joy, spending yeah. time in things that you you love to do, watching a funny movie, listening to your favorite music, having some people over if you can, and getting together with people. We're not meant to be solitary beings. So this is what we talk about raising our vibration. Sorry, Leanne, you were going to add a little bit more. Oh, yeah, no, it was just, um, it, it's, um, I don't know what this is going to be like for other people, but for those of us who have already got some idea of it, because I don't even know that we'll know the full extent of it. It'll be the last. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to be years coming, I think, but um, we're in this together. We truly are. And um but it's going to be joyous. It's going to be righteous. It's going to be good. It really, really is. And and I know I may sound like, oh, ha ha, you can gloss it over like that. But every, I, I, I promise you this, every single time I had this thought of, is this really working out for us? Like, what's really going on here? And, and how is this going to end for us? Um, I kept coming back to, no, it still feels good. I'm telling you, it really does. And, and, and now, like I said, I've gotten to the point of, I'm almost in like, just almost rejoicing of, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, we're just right on the verge of it. Oh, and, and I, I always say to you with you in the U S the thing that happened was you had an election that really woke up a lot more people than it yeah. might. Have. But just remember that there are people all around the world yeah working on things behind the scenes that you may or may not know about that that are trying to have our way of life back to the way it was hopefully much better than it even was before and um you know even we were talking to vanessa briefly there's stuff maybe you haven't looked at look if, if you're say into the finance look into nasara and gasara look into the fiat currency versus the gold standard there's it's all tied together it's really hard to separate but there's so many pieces of this puzzle and once you start i always say kind of open pandora's box if you're thinking about getting the job please, you owe it to yourself to do some research. I've met so many people that say, well, I never researched that kind of stuff. Believe me, please research it. Even if you've heard, well, I know everybody that got it and they never had a problem. Yes, they may very well not have had a problem. Yeah. But, but when you start breaking it down and seeing what's really in this and that actually they are using humanity as a guinea pig, I'm not telling you to get it or not get it. All I'm saying is give yourself the gift of knowledge of spending the time and truly taking the time to see what this is all about. Dr. Carrie Madey, there's um, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, there's Dr. Lee Merritt, there's Dr. Christiane Northrup. Um, there are all kinds of physicians. Those are just a few at the top of my head. <laughs> Dr. Rima Labo, who's on later on, uh, Ralph Isatola with um, Unmasked Crusaders. There are all kinds of people out there coming out that you may not be aware of from medical backgrounds that are telling you what's really going on. We are almost out of time, you know. How does this happen? I told you it was gonna fly by. Do you wanna let people know where they can find you, hun? Yes, um, if you want to know about more about me and my services, I have a Facebook page, a page called The Crystal Architect. I love also, it. I have an Instagram page, um, Architect The Crystal. Mm -hmm. And I kind of refer to both of them back and forth. So find me on one of those. You'll yeah. see what I do, what I'm up to, and what I do, what I spend my time doing. I play a lot, pretty much. Yes, she does. And if you ever want to get a hold of me, you can find me on uh, facebook.com forward slash the angel rock. I also have two groups on Facebook, uh, Paranormal University for all things paranormal. I also have the Angel Rocker Tribe for many of the concepts we're talking about here. And Leanne and I are working on a few things behind the scenes, actually, that we may be bringing to you in the near future. Also, I have a podcast called The Angel Rock um, on Monday nights on United Public Radio Network. Um, it's uprntalkradio.com. 
please come check it out. You can actually even watch it. They've streamed to Facebook, it's streamed to our newer YouTube channel called the UFO Paranormal Radio Channel. Um, also, um, we're going to be back here next week together, both of us, because Karen has yeah. been so kind to ask me to co-host or to, I guess, guest host for her while she's away. So wherever you may be, I send you all so much love and light. Remember, be the change you want to see and seek out what brings you joy. And I want to thank Leanne for being here. I want to thank Gaz again. And I want to thank Vanessa for all the hard work they do. See you next week.